The children who come into the school from Knowsley, of course Knowsley is the third most deprived authority in the country. The children who come into us come in at average, but in maths they are below average. And what's exciting for us, and I think testament to the value-added education that we give, is that over half of our Year 6 children leave at Level 5 in English, Maths and Science. Your presenters for today are from Year 4 and we are Nida, Ben, James, Abby, James and Ellen. The school has been on a tremendously big journey um, from its previous Ofsted to our most recent Ofsted and we've, we've put an awful lot of hard work into making school improvements successful in our school. School self-review lies at the heart of our school and I think that very much, particularly in my mind, has helped to move the school from good to outstanding and continues to play an important part in that role. With St George's Day coming up next Monday, we've been investigating <coughs> the legend of the dragon slaying saint. We hope that you are listening carefully because there will be a quiz at the end, so make sure you've got your paper, pencil and ears ready. We've had a re-look at our curriculum in terms of the needs of the society that our children are going to go out into because of course it's changing, much more technological culture, ethnicity and it's very much about looking at the foundation subjects as much as English and maths and practicing those key skills from English and maths in all those other foundation subjects. Now let's have a round of some important news. In Owls, Miss Lewis celebrated her birthday over the holidays. Abby had a makeover party and Lewis went for a break in a caravan. We hope you all had good fun. We like to believe that our school is a community, a positive community, and we feel that well-being is a part of that. It's in our school improvement plan, it's in our performance management, it's in our day-to-day -day work, um, it's evident throughout the school. OK, people at the front, close your eyes. People at the back, we're going to start with some butterfly wings today. Maybe start with little ones across their shoulders and then get bigger and bigger till you've got the whole wing on their back. OK, let's change our animal again now. Using the whole of our palm, we'll go into bear prints. Lovely on his shoulders. We use relaxation sessions with the children to basically make them aware of relaxation and how they can help themselves. We look at their physical relaxation and their mental state as well. We think about their breathing, we think about their muscle relaxation. It gives them some strategies to use in their own lives. So we're going to breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. We're addressing the well-being of everybody at the school, not just our children, but of adults, the parents, the teachers. OK, take a deep breath for me and breathe out. When you're in a, a day's work, Fran, do you find that you get any sort of particular areas of tension or where you feel tighter through the day? Um, I usually have to watch... Um position on the carpet with the children right. to make sure I'm in a good position. Sometimes um, I have to have cushions when I'm doing, say, a shared input just to pop myself up. We look at the well-being of our staff and we measure that carefully. So reduction in absence, for example, was one measurable indicator. So we are committed to the fact that if we look after our staff, they will be healthy and fit and able to look after the children in their care. Right, so, Lewis, can you tell us what part of our story we're going to be developing now? The dilemma. Good boy. What does the dilemma actually do? How does it make the story sound? If you don't have a dilemma, it'll be um, quite boring. Well done, Sam. 
In terms of writing, we're looking at developing narrative writing and those children who are working within that higher ability will look in to see that those children can, for example, develop a plot so that they have a good understanding of those elements of a story so that they not only have a clear beginning, middle and end, but we're looking to see that they can actually introduce a character into that plot. Beth and Sam, would you like to share one of the scenarios that you would face under the sea? A dark cave, maybe with a big squid inside. Now, what would happen, though? What problem would you face? Maybe the squid came out and tried to get you. And That'd be good. We're looking to see that they can actually use dialogue, um, use more ambitious vocabulary choices. It's really to try and raise that standard within Level 3 so that they are a secure Level 3 by the end of Year 2. The sand tornado, and listen to this verb, transformed into a huge sand monster. Okay, a second. Personalised learning within the school lies at the heart of our school improvement process and really does help to raise standards. We, we believe we've been very creative in using existing national um, programmes um, and we've very much taken those programmes and made them our own. In terms of devising a programme, it is a lot of extra work. However, from implementing programmes in the past, um, intervention programmes that have been available, we have found that they've not been effective. So we felt it was necessary to basically evaluate the content of those programmes and to see where we could include more appropriate learning experiences for the children. I think as a leadership team we encourage people to take risks so if there's an initiative and they feel we can take it on and it will impact on standards we don't want to take on initiatives for the sake of it but if we can trial them and see that it's enriching the work we do then we encourage people to do that. Right we're going to start, we're going to start folks, just give yourself a bit of space you don't need to be with your partner for now. Let's do some tracking exercises so something that's going to help our eyesight for when we go back into class. So we'll do a lazy eight so extend your arm put your thumb out okay look at your thumbnail where you haven't washed it this morning properly okay and slowly slowly follow it like a number eight lying down. We've actually undertaken some research into the effects of brain gym. What we've discovered uh, through a project with Everton Community Football Club as well is that it's actually given children um, heightened concentration levels. Start at three, hand in the air, across and three, three six, six, nine, twelve. We did the study using handwriting um, over a series of ten weeks. We took the raw score that they achieved as a baseline. We then reviewed it five weeks later after using brain gym and football coaching as well. So in this part of the country, it was really well received, obviously. Um, although I must admit, I'd have rather Liverpool came in than Everton. And then at the end, we tested again and the results were fantastic. Um, every single child benefited from it. So looking at your partner, decide who's going to go first. OK, and you can go first for me. Go. One, two, three. Two, three. We've got four very effective business links. We've got a football club, a local safari park, a university and a local beauty salon. So if you imagine those four, they actually have a real range of curriculum subjects that could dovetail into them. OK, so what I wanted to try and explain to you today, because I, I, I have my own business and I work, is the concept of businesses making money or not, so the concept of profit and loss. So here's a cake that I made this morning. Who could tell me what some of the ingredients is that goes to make up a cake? Egg and flour. So we've got eggs and flour. How much, does the, how much would the flour cost? Yeah. Maybe 10 pence. 10 pence. Does everybody agree? Is that a good figure? There are a number of areas in the curriculum that this uh, activity would help. I think from a mental arithmetic development perspective, it's good. I think from an interaction and a group interaction perspective, it's good as well. How much do you think you could sell a slice of cake for in school? Yeah. Well, it could be 60 pence. 60 pence for a slice of cake? I think if we're focusing on our profits, it should be a bit more. I think they should sell it for 72p. 72p? Why 72p? Because you're not making a little prof profit, you're kind of making an in-between profit. Okay.
I think people do sometimes worry about business links, but we're not turning our school into a business, but sometimes some of those entrepreneurial words are quite useful to bring into our vocabulary. But it was certainly quite difficult with some of our governors initially. However, we've worked through it, so we've reached some vocabulary of change, some we've left the same. So can anybody tell me then what profit will make? Do you know what you have to do? Yeah? 24 pound, 90 pence. Excellent. Very good. OK, and who'd like a piece of cake? Some ideas that work for some schools don't work for others. Uh, for example, in a lot of schools we know they've taken on family literacy and family numeracy. For us that didn't work. We tried and tried and tried to get parents involved and we just couldn't get enough parents, even though our parents are so supportive in lots of other ways. So we tried a different initiative. Throughout the last few weeks, children have been looking at slippers and designing um, a slipper to make themselves. So if you want to start, you can come and get anything that you'll need to make your slipper. You can maybe discuss your design first and then... The entire afternoons, the children are really excited when they know the parents are coming in. Um, the parents, the, the children actually invite somebody in. It can be any adults in their life that can come in. And the children going home with an invitation is um, a way that they can't really refuse to come in. Hold it in the middle with the other hand, that's it. Tommy, do you hold it in the middle though with the other hand? So that side needs trimming a little bit. And that side needs trimming a little bit. Do you want to do it? You trim the sides. Coming into the Inspire Afternoons at school, um, you get an awful lot of enjoyment. Um, I think the children benefit, obviously, from the experience of the parent. Um, and it does inspire them to make the, the finished article better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got no need of a coffin. Put that on the floor. On that be a Coming into school to work with Michael in the classroom to see what they've been working on gives me an insight of uh, what it's all about and how they get on and how they learn. And it's given me a chance to help and be involved in his learning, really. It's too wide. OK, and if you stick it along, it'll stick the sole on top. Can we just take a piece of that? What we want to see within our school is a community of learners, uh, whereby parents and staff at all different levels, in all different roles, are working side by side with pupils, enriching their ability to be an effective learner. OK, we're ready to go on our journey. We're going to close our eyes. Lie back and relax. One of the signs that's up in my room is be irresistibly optimistic. And I think sometimes in the face of new initiatives, new ideas, new types of planning, uh, schools can get bogged down in that really and, and lose the determination to be enthusiastic and creative. So we've got to keep that enthusiasm and creativity in everything we do.